So this log was the fifth and last log that I picked up from this pile last spring. At this point I had collected everything from this pile that I could and the only thing left were some really big logs that I had no way to either move or at the time mill. Those logs were six to six and a half feet in diameter, so way too big for me to get onto my trailer by size or by weight. So this log was the most difficult log I've ever loaded onto my trailer due to its odd shape and therefore its goofy balance with all the weight on one end. So this loading process to get it onto my trailer took me an hour and a half, way longer than any other log had ever taken me and has since taken me to get onto my trailer. Numerous times during the loading process, this thing would get hung up on the arch because it was too big or too tall or too wide. And I had to kind of somehow move it around to get it through there. And then the chainsaw came out and I started trimming stuff back to hopefully get it onto the trailer hole. I didn't really want to cut too much off while it's out there because I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do with this log, how I wanted to cut it, and I didn't want to cut any of the pieces that I wanted to keep. But eventually I persevered, I got it up there, I got it home, it sat here until the sawmill was built, and all of the other four logs that I hauled before it were slabbed up, and now this log is on the mill and ready to go. There we go. Five logs saved. <laughs> That's uh, some big logs. So check this out. Look at that. You got some really cool spalting there. It's kind of a bullseye kind of thing, like a cookie. Hey Jim. I'm just leaving, so should be. Okay. I'll be a oh, half hour, 45 minutes. Okay. Yeah, I just started uh, cutting, so I'll probably still be cutting when you get here. Okay. Sounds good. All right. See you soon. So I'm thinking that, and this is about two feet wide, maybe a little bit longer than that. So I think that would make a pretty cool like side table top. So I think what I'm gonna do is when I get done with this log, I'm gonna cut the rest of this off cut up into little slabs, and that'll make a bunch of little slabs that look like this which would make some pretty cool side table tops. So now that that thing's out of the way, I thought we could take a look around at the log and just kind of see what we're working with a little bit easier. So down here, you know, they, this is removed for, for, like for garbage or whatever, so they weren't too careful with the removal. So we have all this torn material there. So, you know, depending on whoever uses these slabs, maybe they won't want all of this, but I'm still gonna leave it on here instead of just, you know, chopping it off and then slabbing it just to give more options to the future. But you can see through here, all of the striations that are in there right now, that is all curl in there. So this is all curly up in here, I know that, just by looking at this. Now over here are two big burls. Um, part of it got cut off down here. Uh, when I went to go get this log, this burl was partially cut through already because these were sitting there for firewood and any of the small stuff that people can cut with their smaller saws was getting cut for firewood. So someone had tried to cut through this for firewood, but they didn't make it all the way through. <laughs> so I finished the cut when I got it back here. No, I finished it when I was out there to try and get it onto the trailer. So instead of removing these and trying to do something like that, I'm gonna actually include them in the slabs. I think they will provide sort of a nice visual interest in the slabs as well. And if someone wants to buy the slab, they don't want a burl in it, or it's just too weird, they can always cut it off and have a piece of burl for themselves, you know, it's up to them. Just more options for whoever gets to use these things in the future. Now, as I come down here and make my surface cut, which is gonna go down to my levelers, that's gonna remove part of this burl here. So I'll have this little chunk of burl here that I could use for something else as well. So there'll be a little bit of burl wood coming off of this thing. Now, if I come around here to the other side, you can see the other half of this crotch. Uh, this side has a little bit of dry rot. So this is kind of, it's not super soft, you know, but it's got that kind of dry rot look and feel. I'm not sure if that was the side that was sitting down on the ground while this log was sitting on the ground for firewood or what, or if it was like that when it was growing. Not really sure, but there'll probably be a pretty good amount of spalting on this side of the crotch. This side doesn't seem to have as much figure, at least it's looking at the outside of the log, 
compared to the other side. This side has all of the, the curl and the quilting you know, visual indicators on the outside. So it has these little lumps here, that's a quilting lump. And then you can see this, this striation, this, wow, the striations here in the bark or in the, in the wood, and that's curl. That's the wood fibers going like that. And if you take a look at this crack, you can tell that the wood fibers do undulate because that crack is not straight. It's following the grain and the grain is going up and down all over the place. So that's curly there. So a little bit of everything in this log. Here's some more quilting and curl up here. If I get the angle right, you can see it better. There we go. All of this is all curl through here and the lumps are quilt figure. So that cut was the highest I've ever had the saw head off the bed. That was 40 inches. So I think I'll do is I cut this to just a little bit over two inches thick. I'll make another cut at two or a little over two inches thick and that'll provide me with a nice flat area over here to put down to my levelers. So the other thing I'm noticing at this point is this thing is kind of uh, rocking around a little bit, which I kind of expected because it's not really sitting all that, there's not a lot of contact with the bed. So I'm gonna have to watch as I get down here closer to the bed, but I'm thinking because I'm so high up and all the cut forces up there, I got kind of a torque force as I'm pulling it across. So in theory, as I get lower to the bed, it should cut a little bit easier. And the other thing I think I have to do with this because there isn't much weight on, or there isn't much support down here, is I'm gonna have to keep as much weight on the mill as possible as I'm working through this. So I'm really gonna have to make my facing cut and then I'm not gonna be able to move any of my slabs or look at any of them until I get all the way down. So I'm gonna make my facing cut and then I'll get to actually making slabs and I'll cut as deep as I can without moving the log. So that's gonna be Oh, like eight slabs or so. I'll probably, I should be able to cut all the way, almost all the way through and cut almost all the slabs as it sits right now without moving it. That's not going to be deep enough, so I'm going to come back, drop the saw head, maybe another probably two inches, and then make that cut. And that should be that should be enough to make my flat cut thing. That's kind of cool, huh? Kind of some cool grain. I tell you, this silver maple is beautiful stuff. It's got all kinds of, it's more red than white at this point because it's been sitting around for so long, but it's just beautiful like this. Oh, oh, oh boy. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. That is just beautiful. Oh wow. This has got a lot of figure. I love firewood. <laughs> ah, the stuff no one wants. All right, check it out. Look at all the figure in there. This is all quilting and curling all through here. There's some just beautiful color coming down here. Some really cool spalting through here. Some more figure along here. And then some really cool kind of starburst figure coming off the top of this limb here. 
I was excited before, but now I'm even more excited. Oh, perfect. So if I cut these at around 10 quarter or so, that'll include all of that full bark inclusion and just this one slab, and the next slab will have uh, no valley in it. And I think that'll also put me right into where the next slab will have the burl attached to it, which is gonna be really cool. So for the next series of cuts, the log's not gonna move. I'm gonna cut as many slabs as I can with the throat depth on the saw. And then when my friend Jim gets here, we'll move all the slabs and take a look at them all in one go. So I kind of lied a little bit. My friend Jim is here. We're gonna move this one slab out of the way, get it stacked, and I'm gonna put a fresh blade on here. I like to put a fresh blade on for any of these larger logs. Cutting this much width is pretty demanding, so a nice sharp blade ensures that all the slabs will come up perfectly without having to worry about that blade wandering because it's just starting to get dull just a little bit. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Boom. 
Wow. That's awesome. Get that bug off there. Hey, hey get off there. Get off my slab, bug. Get out of here. <laughs> little, bug. little roly poly. <laughs> wow. Look at that. That's incredible. That make an incredible table. Just incredible. Nice long crotch feather right through there. Man, that's just beautiful. Good? Oh man. Just when you thought it couldn't get any better. Joke's on you. Nice. Look at all the rays. Isn't that nice? Look at that. This is all the way through here. All curl through there, and there's some really nice. There's the crotch figure there, and that's all just beautiful stuff. That's a pretty nice slab. Look at the curl. Oh man. How Maybe cool is that? Huh? Yeah. It's hard. A little bit, but. Hi, JR. Remember we went and got this tree together, you and me? That's pretty Hi, big. That could be a good coffee table. Wow. You guys just uh, did these? They are huge. Uh, we're Lindsay's parents. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That'll look nice in our house. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> your house this. is not big enough for this. No kidding. What are you gonna do with this? I don't know. You want? Slab. Hey, do you want a you want a slab? No. Some I... wall art. Very cool. Uh -oh. Uh oh, Daddy, will pick it up for you. Me. Uh -oh. I have a feeling we're gonna be doing that up the entire way. Why All right, why don't we, we leave, leave it here? Daddy will wear it. Here, Dad's gonna be. Yeah. Better go find the players. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Bye -bye. I gotta go find some more garbage trees. Yeah. <laughs> Ready for the big reveal? This is the best part right here. That was a that was a crappy pour. Sorry. That was a tease. That was a terrible one. Yeah, it's <laughs> it looks even more crazy on camera. Mm. It looks just like all curl. Got the little sunburst up there. Yeah. The sunburst barrel. How about that, huh? Man, that's beautiful. The crap out of it, make it I don't take much. Table. I wish I had a bigger house so I had to have like a thousand tables. Yep. It's like I want to keep them all. I know. It's like my children. <laughs> yep. I'd love them all. Oh, God! Oh. Oh. <laughs> nice yeah, it's right in my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> right <in my> shoe. <laughs> oh, Take a of that. oh man! <laughs> right in the sock. All right, I got wet feet. I'm glad I left this burl on here instead of cutting it off because this is a really cool feature now. That's incredible, huh?
Wow. So there we go, nice stack of slabs and these are absolutely beautiful, uh, probably as beautiful as the smaller uh, maple crotch that we cut in the first big logs video and then of course the other three of the big logs that I picked up from that same pile are all back here slabbed up and drying. So this kind of brings us around to the end of the adventure in a sense because this whole thing kind of started for me, this journey started for me about a little over a year ago as I was picking up these big logs and having them here really got me interested and got me motivated and got me inspired to build the sawmill and that thing has been an incredible experience in itself and being able to cut these things with something that I built myself has whole, a whole nother meaning and a whole different value than anything I've ever experienced in my life. So I wanna say, of course, big thank you to everyone who's been following along with this journey for the last year or so. It's been a wild ride, and I am very lucky to have you all come along with me. So even though this is kind of the end of the, the journey for me in a sentimental sense, there's definitely gonna be more milling. There's gonna be more stuff going on at the sawmill as well. And one question that I thought I'd answer at the end of this video was why did I make the sawmill to that capacity that it has right now um, over six feet of cut width and six feet of cut height and the reason for that was if I ever encounter one of those six foot or so diameter logs that I had to pass on last time at least I want to pass on it for the aspect of not being able to mill it that problem is solved and the transportation issue is honestly a much easier issue to solve if I ever need to. So, I know those logs are out there. I've seen them in person. It's scary staying next to them because they're like this tall. But if I ever encounter one again, it's coming here and going on that mill. <laughs> There's no way I'm gonna let something that big get turned into firewood ever again. So, thank you again for joining me on this adventure. If you wanna see any of these other four milling videos, I'll have a link up in the cards to a playlist that contains all the big log milling videos. <laughs> so thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on any of the logs or anything back in the shop or in the sawmill or whatever, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.